So we've got this video so far, we've been adding different things to it. There's another opportunity here to edit the clip. Uh, so this will be good practice because there's another part right here where, where I'm waiting for the camera to focus on the phone. I want to cut that out. So I used probably one of these web cameras. My setup right there is that I've got a web camera, like this Logitech one that I mentioned. You might see a microphone on the edge. That one is, um, I believe that's the, it's called the Zoom. Let me pull up my notes here. It's uh, for a microphone. I'm using uh, the Zoom H2N. I don't know the price of it. I got it. I got it second second hand. I got it used for a hundred dollars. Um, and there's just such a huge variety of microphones that are high quality. Some of the famous ones are the are the Yeti microphones. Uh, there's like the Blue Yeti. There's Snowball. There's all of this from the Yeti company and they range from forty to two hundred and forty dollars. Uh, if you want to get very good audio, uh, good microphone is is a prerequisite and again I don't work for fries or anything, I just love fries and going there, it's the happiest place on earth. Um, <laughs> right down the street right over there and go browse the go browse the department with music stuff, with microphones. You're gonna see handheld microphones, you know, small like this that you can set up and record. You, you put it there and you record. That one that I've got in the video is, is plugged in directly to my laptop, so it's recording directly to my laptop. I've got it on a tripod. Um, it's portable. It uses batteries. I, I like it. I, I don't think that one is out for sale, maybe. It might be a slightly older generation, but you can look, <laughs> you can look into it. Uh, but I do recommend that one. Is yes. it USB or is it different? It's USB. Yeah, because that could be often a problem with microphones. They come, they could have like an XLR plug, which you need a special soundboard for it and complication. But a lot of the modern ones are just USB plug and play. Yes. Also, the people down at Guitar Center are very, very mm. well educated on these things. They've got a selection too. Definitely. Where's Frost down here? Do you, you take a, what's the street again? Arrow Drive. You just take it all the way down. Eventually it gets over to the 805, but before you go that far, you take a right where there's Stone, Stonecraft Drive, Murphy Canyon, Road. Murphy Canyon Road. So it's the street right before you get on the freeway. You take a right on that street, you'll see Pet Smart, you'll see Walmart, you'll see uh, a little bit further down, there's Fry's. That's 15, not 805. Oh, yeah, the 805 is over here. <laughs> Sorry, yes, the 15 is that way. So uh, that was my setup for that web camera, that microphone, and then of course this editor. Speaking of the editor, there's a little bit more here that I want to cut out. So if I play it here, it has everything that you need. So so as we see here, so there's that part where it's where I'm trying to get it to focus. You see here, you need so. At approximately 43 seconds or so, you can see it. It's visual right there. I'm speaking. There's the waveform. I'm not speaking because I'm trying to focus it. And then I start speaking again. We're going to do the same thing where we do a split, where we do two splits. And then in the middle, we delete that clip. So let's try that again. If you uh, move it at approximately 43 seconds and then you right click, split, and remember when you do the split is when the thumbnail changes. I wish the thumbnail would change for every second so you can quickly see what's there. But it, I split it right there and then I can see I also need to split it somewhere right here before I start speaking. In my case perhaps it's at about 49 seconds. So now you're, you can see Change yeah, like I just said, every time you do the split, it does change it at oh, that point, right but here. only when you do the the split. It doesn't change it anywhere else. It didn't change. Oh, okay. So if I right click where else I'm going to start to speak here, uh, right click and split there. So now I've got. 
the clips that had happened before. I've got the central part that is silent that I need to cut out. Then I've got the, the continuation of the clip, which is what I want to keep. So I, again here, be careful what you've selected. Make sure you've selected the central part, and it's highlighted blue. There's the beginning, there's the end, there's the middle. In the middle part, I can just click it to select it and press delete. Or right click and remove. And then now it's going to go from this first clip first clip to the second clip has everything that you need so so as we see here has everything that you need so so as we see here there it goes from from here where it's not focused to here where it is focused and again it is it is up to you to decide how you're going to edit all of this because you could say the video is showing me like this and then suddenly it's showing me like that like I backed up a little bit what about if I transition that a little bit? Great, select the clip and add an animation. The problem is sometimes you're not going to be able to make that seamless. You just did not record it seamlessly, and it's going to be either a lot of work or not possible to make a fully seamless transition between clips. Like there. In my case, I also perhaps personally, I don't like that I say blah, 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 so, so that I say so twice. Maybe I want to cut that out. Again, that's uh, that's going in and splitting the clip. As everything that you need, so so as we... I say the word so apparently right on that little bump right there. I could try to go in and cut that part out. But that oftentimes will not give you the result that you think because when we speak, you're thinking of, you're thinking that I'm speaking in words. But I'm actually speaking in, you know, sounds that blur together. And you're going to see that a lot when you try to edit. You thought you had a very clear transition between each word that you're saying. But you're not. You're speaking like a normal person and all your words are blurring together more than you think. So here if I try to cut out so, I'm going to probably clip a little bit of my previous word. As everything that you need so. Need so. I didn't say everything that you need so. I said everything that you need so. It's going to blur together in there, and when you cut out so, suddenly need is going to cut out short, too, sh too short. So I'm not going to worry about that. I already bothered with it two days ago at the other class. I know that's going to be a losing proposition. Uh, but if you'd like to cut that out, you're going to see that, depending on a variety of factors, it may be easy or difficult or not possible. As everything that you need, so, so as we see here... Um, so I'm going to live with it has everything that you need so so as we see here but for fun what I could do is add the animation remember select the second clip the one that it's gonna fade into go to animations and select some animation and this time I'll select um, thing that so as we well, that was weird it has everything that so as we need, see so here again because one is fading into the other it oh, overlaps right. I need to decrease the duration the yeah, they also overlap. The visuals overlap and the audio overlaps. That you need, so so as we... Okay, so that's a very subtle thing right there. It might not even be worth it, but here's my result. It has everything that you need, so so as we... See that? And this is our problem when we're editing this stuff. We have it in our mind. We know how it looks. We recorded it. We lived it. We're editing it, we're playing it over and over and over, and we're hearing ourselves over and over. I sound like that over and over and over. <laughs> so we're hearing it and we're, we're living it. I guarantee you that in the grand scheme of it all, no one's going to notice when it jumped from here to here. You're going to notice it because you're doing it and you're living it. But when you actually upload it, unless it's you know very catastrophic, no one's going to notice these little things. No one's going to notice that I said so twice, even though it bugs me. No one's going to notice that, really. It has everything that you need, so so as we see... And that is you deciding how much you want to invest in the effort. See here, uh, these are all of the apps that I use on, on a regular basis, a lot of very useful ones. This device really helps you get all your work done. And you've got the, the camera ability here, where you can take a photo, take a video, send it to anyone. It's very high tech. It takes photos and videos. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
$700 off contract. Now, um, again, this is just something I recorded for us to have something to show for when we talk about YouTube. We're getting close to wrapping up the video. What I want to do is, you know, I'll just jump to the end. It ends, and then the video ends. Tech Review Tuesday. See you next time. And it ends. This is the perfect chance then to add credits at the end. The point of the credits is more branding for your video. What if your video goes viral and ends up on someone else's site? Well, on the on the caption on the credits at the end of my video, I could write whatever I want there. It doesn't have to be literally like the credits that you see at a movie where it's directed by, sound by, all of that. You can write whatever you want, such as your website address, such as a message that says, don't forget to subscribe, such as follow this link for an exclusive coupon. So we can put whatever we want in the credits. Let's play with that. Go back to the home tab. And now we'll select the third type of text, credits. On the black triangle, you have different ways to add the credits. Um, they're not really that useful for us. Soundtrack, starring, etc. So you just want the default one. If you, if you don't click on the black triangle, if you just click the word credits, that's the same as clicking the first one. We want the, just the first one. Click credits. It'll say credits, but we can make it say what we want. I'm going to say, again, here's my branding. Cut that out and say, Tech Review Tuesday. Press Enter a couple times. Motorola Moto E. Press Enter a few more times. By Victor Campos. Everything that I'm typing here is what's going to scroll past my screen, like in the classic movie credits. I can choose a different type of animation, but the default scrolling up is fine. You know, it's going to scroll up right here. But I can write what I want, so I'm going to say Tech Review Tuesday with Victor Campos, uh, Victor's Tech Reviews .com. If if the text gets cut off, just you know, stretch out your box, stretch out your box so that it gives you more space. Victor's Tech Reviews .com copyright 2016 whatever um, right now all of this text is just kind of zoom it's gonna zoom by a little too fast it's kind of a lot of text if you spread it out with a few enters you know if you press enter in between these it's gonna spread out a little bit more you know, if you put a few enters in there to stretch it out and this is another case where duration here. These credits are going to zoom by in seven seconds. Uh, probably your text duration is, you know, a good 15 seconds. Time. Let's see, look at that. Tech Review Tuesday. See you next time. If you need more time on that, again, you can select your text track under the um, text tool. You can say, give me that for 30 seconds. See you next time. The longer you put that text duration, the slower it goes, the more readable it is. So usually you're going to be dealing in tens of seconds for the credits. 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. That's way too slow, I think. But uh, you want it faster than the 6 seconds default. See you next time. You can always go back and further edit the text, and it's up to you how you put it. Uh, but I like to put some space in between each one line of text. And you just press Enter to give yourself more space between the lines. Uh, I have, in my case, I wrote copyright 2016. 
everything, the basic protections of copyright is that when you create anything, you put it into some fixed format, it's copyrighted, it's protected to some degree. Um, sometimes people ask, how do I add the copyright symbol? To add the copyright symbol on Windows, on Windows you have to, it's tricky, you have to hold down the Alt key, keep holding the Alt key, and then on the number pad, the number pad on the right, not the number rows at the top, the number pad on the right, you type 0, 1, 6, 1, let go of the Alt, oops, this is 0, 1, 6, 9, yes, sorry, it's hold Alt, 0, 1, 6, 9, let, it, let go of Alt, and then you get the copyright symbol. So if you want to look a little more professional, you hold Alt, 0, 1, 6, 9 on the number pad, not on the number row at the top of the keyboard. On the Mac, it's different. I think it's like Option C, and you get the copyright. But this is a basic form of copyright protection. Obviously, it's most copyrighted if you actually, you know, patented and trademarked it and filled out some forms and paid some fees. But this is enough so uh, you have some protection. So did you put, did you lay down your music bed on this and have it be really faint in the background? Yeah, we're about to do that right now. The video is coming together really well, and the last little bit of polish often is a little bit of music, so we'll do that next. You know, I discovered this trick on, on um, Photoshop when I was trying to get an M dash in there. Mm -hmm. There are all these complicated ways online, mm -hmm. and I just copied it from Word, and I just did that with the copyright symbol yeah. too, and that works. That's another way. If you see these special characters in Word or on a website, yeah. and you copy and paste, because it's text. Yeah. So if you copy that symbol off of anywhere else and paste it in here, it'll take it. So if we don't know the, the complicated keyboard shortcut, we can copy and paste symbols. So um, the final thing that we'll do with this project is a little bit of music. Again, we could spend a lot of effort to fully, you know, keep editing a lot more things. But we've got a lot. We've got some text. We've got editing where we cut out the mistakes. We've got text. We've got, now let's add some music. I'm going to save my work so far. Just hit the Save button up there. On the Home tab, we have its own little button, Add Music. If you click the black triangle first, whenever there's a drop down, whenever there's a little triangle, it's usually more options. If you just select the icon, it does the default right away. But if you select here, you can get more options. Same thing with credits. Same thing with record narration. But the default. If you click the add music triangle, this is the thing about, I've got a great video, but it would be greater if I add a little music. And this always, uh, is a stumbling block because people want to get that music off of that CD or I want to use that famous song or I want to do this and that. The short answer is don't use anyone's song. It's not a short answer. The short answer is don't use anyone's song unless you know it's copyright free, unless it's stock images, unless it's, I mean stock sounds, unless it's royalty free, unless it's okay for you. And you have to assume any song you want to use is not okay. And unfortunately that's that, that, that's not so good if I tell you that, but that's going to be your best bet because you don't want your video to be removed from YouTube. If you, if you put a, you know, I made this song, I mean I made this video, and then I put in a really nice Prince instrumental in honor, the video is going to get taken down. I don't own the copyright on that song. You don't own that copyright. It's very, very expensive to use real music, copyrights and all of that. So we have under Add Music, we can go, go we can go to Add Audio Micro, Free Music Archive, and the, in this particular Vimeo link to help us find video or audio clips that are okay for us to use in our audio in our video clips. And when we create our YouTube account next week, we will see that there is a, a section there with thousands of songs for free for us to use for any purpose with search and in styles and lengths and such. 
But these three places, especially the Free Music Archive, guess what? It's places to get free music for your projects in a variety of styles. Vocal, instrumental, classical music, hip-hop, techno, etc. I've already got one, I already got a music file for you, which I got from YouTube. So what we're going to do is we're going to select to add music. You can have one soundtrack playing throughout the whole thing, or you can have different clips playing at different points. It's more complicated for us than I want to do at the moment. I simply want to add one music bed behind everything. So if you just click on the note, it's the same as clicking add music. We're going to add music on the whole project. Go to the folder on your desktop where you've got the YouTube clip. And you should see higher.mp3. And this will take just about every kind of sound. Movie Maker will take mp3s and waves and WMAs. It'll take just about every kind of video. But you want to select higher.mp3 and click open. And you get a new track. You've got a video track, a text track, an audio track. And that shows you the waveform. It shows you the sound playing and playing and playing. Now be careful because this is pretty loud. Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos with you. But did you notice that it decreased its volume slightly when I started to speak? Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos with you. It did it slightly, it's still kind of loud. We can edit that. But notice throughout my whole project, I've got that green track of audio, even over to the credits. It's very loud. We can edit that. Now that we've got video track, text track, audio track, make sure you select your audio track and now you have music tools. So you have text tools for text tracks, video tr tools for video tracks. If you've got an audio track, you've got music tools. Yes? Um, when I click here, I'm not to the icon folder. Is that what well, after you click, you then have to navigate the folder over to go find your YouTube clip folder. Well, wherever you save that folder, it's probably on your desktop, that YouTube clip folder. So what I want to do is music tools. So under music tools here, let's look. We've got a few options here. I've got the audio track selected, I've got music tools. I can edit the whole volume of the music, we'll see that, we've got fade in and fade out. Wouldn't it be nice that the video fades, I mean the audio fades out as the song ends? Because right now it doesn't, it does this. And then it suddenly ends, depending on the length of your video. So we have a fade out right there, just to show you that slow, medium, or fast fade out. I'm going to do medium fade out and then just to show you what it sounds like. Fade out. Fast or slow. Place you do the fade out, or nope, anywhere. It just, it. it just does it. You select your audio, and this will apply to the to the whole audio clip, fade in or fade out. You've got these other things that you can do with the audio about cutting out the audio, splitting the audio. When does it start? But what I'm trying to get at is still too loud. This audio is still way too loud. So I've got the audio selected, and then I've got music volume, and this has higher or lower. I'm going to move this lower. <laughs> See you next time. And so this has been Victor Campos for Tech Review Tuesday. See you next time.
still too loud. So I'm probably going to put it really low, like one click up from the lowest. So this has been Victor Campos for the Tech Review Tuesday. See you next time. The way I did it is that I, you know, you, when you you can drag it, and then I dragged it all the way to the left, and then on the keyboard I just pressed to the right one time. Oh, on your arrow key? Okay. On arrow keys on the keyboard, yeah. You can also use the arrow keys. See, I'm using the keyboard here to move it up incrementally. You have to first select it though. If you, I think if you, if you click here and then click, yeah, I guess so. So if you click on the music volume, then you can use the arrow keys. And I took it all the way to the left and then just up one click, a minimal amount. So could you be playing and then using your arrow keys to? No, it's, it's, at, yeah, so you have to play it a little bit. And so this has been Victor Campos for the and then go back and raise it and lower it. So it might be too low. And so this has been Victor Campos for the Tech <laughs> Review Tuesday. See you next time. And the volume comes back up again. Can so again, increase the volume of your text. Increase the volume of my text or my voice? Your voice. Um, you can do that too. If you select your video, and then you go to the video tools, you can change the audio of the video. So that could be what I could also do. Maybe I need to bring my voice up and the volume down. The problem is we've split this clip several times, and each one is independently controlled. So if I raise the volume of the last 10 seconds of my video, it's only going to raise the volume up to that point, remember? I've split the clip. So I have to remember to bring it up. This is a chicken or the egg thing. Do I raise my voice first and then lower the, the volume? after I've worked on the project? Or do I play with the volume and such and then work on my project? Both ways are valid, but we did it the way that we worked on the project, then we added audio, and now I've got this problem. If we had first added our video, and then our audio, and then work with the audio, and then work with the video, that might have saved us this effort. But we learn from mistakes. Well, you're not... You're, you're adding the music part, but you're not, not adding the audio connected to your video. Exactly. The video came with audio, right. definitely. I can change that independently. And then I added the audio secondly, the I see what music you're track. You could have done a big global uh, bring up or something, mm -hmm. and then done your edits. Okay. But if you split after you add the audio, does it split the, or the uh, music? Does it split the music as well? You can do that independently. You can split, which is what we've done here. We've got this clip split into this one, and the audio is independent. Uh, if we select the audio, and then I choose to right-click audio split, I can split the audio too. It is independent, and that could give us more, more control. So whatever volume sounds good to you, let me back up from the beginning. It's too low. Hello, everyone. This is Victor Campos with the Tech Review Tuesday. So again, you can uh, further uh, refine this. Um, put it a few. Let's do one, two, three clicks up. Hello, everyone. This is Victor Campos with the Tech Review that Tuesday. Might be good. Today, I've got some new hardware for you. You can hear me and the music behind it. That's the audio bed, the music bed. It lies behind, below the video. So there we go, professional. We've got text, we've got audio, we've got edits. It's a, it's a video. Um, the particulars of, of what the video is about, you know, I just made it all up. That's not any real thing. I just needed to give you some video. So based on the handout that I gave earlier, which kind of video do you think we just created? Most likely review. Maybe an advertisement. It doesn't have to literally be, you know, like the ad that I showed of the restaurant, but this could be advertising that product as well. Maybe I'll mix in how to in there. But these are different ideas for you to create your own videos for your own company. The idea comes from you. Then the tools, how to put it together, we spent, you know, about three hours or so on 
on, on this editor, and there's still a lot to learn, but there's more time for you to practice between now and next time. And we're going to wrap up in just a moment because the last thing that I want to do is let's go back to the home screen, the home tab, and on the top right corner, uh, click the triangle for Save Movie. Don't click the icon yet. Click Save Movie. We have Save the Movie as Recommended Settings, Save the Movie for High Def TVs, Save the Movie to Burn on a DVD or for Email. In each one of these, if you hover over, it tells you the detail. For an email, it's going to be a relatively low quality output because we've got this high quality video that we created. It's a work in progress. It's still separate tracks, separate elements. I need to, when it's all done, save movie, but I need to select the setting. Am I going to send this to iPhones? Am I going to put this on, on Windows 8? Am I going to put it on certain websites? I can send it directly to YouTube. Most of the time, we're going to select the very first one, recommended settings. It's pretty smart about choosing the right settings. So that's the same as simply clicking the icon, because it's the same first icon. Let's save movie and go with recommended settings. It's going to save it as HD quality, whatever we inputted. Recommended settings, and it's saying where should we save this? Question. Uh, if I save it, post it on my website, and when I play back on my cell phone, will, then, will the cell phone know which is optimized for what device? If we saved this as the highest quality and put it on your website, the cell phone is going to try to play the highest quality. But if we put it on YouTube, YouTube will automatically show the best quality per the device. So that's why it's a better idea that we learn this and we usually put our videos on YouTube. Even if we've got our own site, I would still recommend putting it on YouTube because YouTube is an infinite hard drive with infinite speed. Whereas my own server, I'm going to run out of space with all my video clips, it's going to slow down my whole site, it's going to crash my site. So even with, for a client, we still put their videos on YouTube. We can just embed, add a link or embed, and we'll see how to do that. I'm saving the movie, I'm saving it into the, the same folder, just to keep it all together. And right here, I'm going to call it um, Moto... E, Moto E review. The name of this that we that we save here when we upload it to YouTube next time, it will take the name of the file and fill it in for us. We can change it, of course, but if we put in a meaningful name here, this will save us some effort when we upload it to YouTube. And yes, there's a bunch of search engine optimization we have to talk about when we get to that point keywords and descriptions and all of that, which we'll get to next time. But here I'm just saving the file. It's saving it into some format that it felt was the best, which is often write MP4 format. Click Save. And this is the annoying part. Depending on the power of your computer, this might go fast, it might go slow. Um, mine's going relatively slow because I've also got the recorder going on and other things. Yours might go faster. The longer your video is, the longer this render takes place. The slower your computer is, so the, the, if it doesn't have very good RAM or a CPU, you know, the hardware of your computer. If your computer's low end, that's gonna, this is going to take longer. If you've got a long video, this is going to take longer. So those 30-minute long videos that you plan on releasing every week, you're going to be spending a while just watching that <laughs> compile. That's when you go off and take a, a coffee break. Eventually this is about to finish. And when it finishes, it says, would you like to play it to see it like a real video? Would you like to open it? So it's done. Would I like to play it, open the folder, or close this? Let me just play it to show you the final result, because we've been looking at it as a little tiny thumbnail. This is going to be a full screen video.
Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos for the Tech Review Tuesday. Today I've got some new hardware for you. This is the Motorola Moto E. It's one of the newest devices running Android. So I highly recommend this device and let's take a look why. So this device is very good because it's very powerful. It has all the particular apps that we might need. It uh, lets you do social media, it lets you do uh, instant messaging, it's got a 20 megapixel camera, it has everything that you need. So, so as we see here, uh, these are all of the apps that I use on, on a regular basis, a lot of very useful ones. This device really helps you get all your work done. And you've got the, the camera ability here, where you can take a photo, take a video, send it to anyone, and it's a really good phone. So I give this five out of five stars, and I highly recommend it. So this is with Victor Campos for the Tech Review Tuesday. See you next time. Yeah, now that I look at it again, I could have gone in to the video clip to the video tool, no, the visual effects. Yeah, we go to the visual effect, brightness, maybe brighten it. And that's for the overall? No, this is also per, per oh. clip, unless you select apply to all. Oh. So now here, all my clips have brightened them up. It just still doesn't look so good on the, on the screen there. But yeah, there's still plenty more that I could keep working on it, but at this point I think uh, I've done a pretty good amount. Um, this that we worked on together, I've, I've saved this into my... I've saved it, I've been saving these results, the WLMP file, the, the project file, and then also this one that I just created, these, the, the, these are my results. I'm going to take them with me on a flash drive, if you'd like. If not, I have the com a version of the completed one that we can use next time. Next time we will create the YouTube channel and we'll have something that we can upload. Maybe between now and next time, make a video of your, of your own that you want to upload to your channel. And when we do that next time, we'll create the channel, talk about optimizing, monetizing, SEO, all of that stuff. because. YouTube could be a great source of traffic and revenue. Any general quick questions? All right, so um, we'll try to have like one minute of lap time, but there's a class coming in after us. That's it for the moment. Thank you for coming.